Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Miss Laura here for our weekly virtual story time. I am back from a vacation and I really am glad that Miss Melissa was here to do virtual story time while I was gone. It was awesome, wasn't it? But I missed you guys, so I'm glad to be back. I have some really good books today. I didn't really stick with a the theme, um, just some, some books I really enjoy. So let's sing our hello song first. Here we go. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? Yeah. All right. We're going to start with this book called Bear in the Air. This little teddy bear is going on quite an adventure. Written by Susan Myers, illustrated by Amy Bates. Bear in the Air. There's little bear on his shell. Who's in that picture? That must be the bear's little boy. Looks like they are very good friends. Do you have a special bear or toy or doll at your house that's your special friend? This is the bear that went for a ride. Bounced from the stroller. Uh-oh, how baby cried. Mother looked everywhere, here and then there, but they had to go on without finding the bear. Do you see the bear? This is the dog that found the bear, shook it and tossed it high in the air. Carried it down to the sandy shore and trotted away with the ribbon it wore. This is the wave that came rushing in, taking the bear for a watery spin over and under and out to sea, far from the shore where the bear used to be. This is the man out sailing a boat who saw the bear drifting, barely afloat, lowered a net, but though he took care, the net didn't hold and out slipped the bear. This is the seal that popped up to see what all the splashing above him could be found the bear bobbing and took it to play deep in the ocean and then swam away. My goodness, what do you think is going to happen next to bear? This is the seaweed that tangled the bear, tying a ribbon of green in its hair. Fish came to nibble its nose and its toes as up to the surface the bear slowly rose. This is the bird that dived for the fish, but came up with the bear in its beak. What a dish! Flappity, flappity up to the sky. Never before had the bear been so high. That bird is called a pelican, I believe. This is the breeze that made the bird sneeze sent the bear tumbling head over knees, turning and twisting round and round, bumping and bouncing back to the ground. It's a good thing bear is soft, soft and cushy. This is the lady who picked up the bear and hung it to dry in the warm summer air.
Along came Katie. What a surprise! Mother could scarcely believe her own eyes. They found each other again. That makes me happy. This is the bear that's been everywhere, deep in the ocean and high in the air. tucked in safe so it won't bounce away. This is the bear that's come home to stay. The end. I like that book. Well, shall we sing a song? Let's sing our ABCs together, okay? Do any of you have big kids in your house that went back to school? Yeah, it's that time, isn't it? Here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? I hope you sang with me this time. We have a new book at the library about someone you may know. Who's that? Llama Llama. An Anna Dewney book. Have you read any of our other books about Llama Llama? There's Llama Llama Red Pajama, Llama Llama Mad at Mama, Llama Llama Loose Tooth Drama, and much more. This one is called Llama Llama Meets the Babysitter. Have you ever had a babysitter? Oh my, here's what's on the first page. Yum, ice cream sundae. Mmm. Llama Llama having toast. Llama loves this meal the most, the start of every happy day. Mama has some things to say. I have something new to talk about. Tonight, I will be going out. Graham can't come as normal, but I have a plan he'll like a lot. Just as always, we'll have dinner, and then you'll have a babysitter. Someone to be here while I'm gone. Don't worry, dear, it won't be long. A baby, what? That's not the same. Does this sitter have a name? You've met Molly. She's fun and kind. Once she gets here, you won't mind. We're not the same, yes, that's true, but she will take good care of you. Will she want to ride my bike? Will she read the books I like? Will she play my favorite games? Will she even know my name? Of course she knows you, Llama dear. You'll have fun when I'm not here. Llama doesn't look too sure about that. Will she know to make my snack? And what if you do not come back? Llama Llama, you'll be fine. Molly does this all the time. No need to fret, no need to moan. Of course I will be coming home. Llama Llama, feeling sad. Llama's getting oh so mad. Llama's brain starts to fizz. Who does this sitter think she is? It's always hard when, when something happens for the first time. I won't be nice. I won't have fun. Instead, I will run, run, run. The doorbell rings. Now she's here. Come say hello, Llama dear. 
Llama peeks around the door. Wait, here's someone he's seen before. I know you. You scoop ice cream. Yes, I'm Molly, Llama beams. What's in the bag? I brought samples, vanilla, chocolate, and pineapple. She must work at Brahms. Mama Llama blows a kiss. I think you're both are I think you both are fine with this. Mama's gone now, out the door. Treats with Molly and so much more. Play in the yard, jump up and down, kick the ball and run around. Ice cream, reading, hide and seek. Llama could do this all week. Time to brush and off to bed. Fluff the pillow for Llama's head. Molly and Mama are not the same, but Llama's glad this sitter came. Almost asleep and not alone. Molly's here. Mama's almost home. Light from the door, just a crack. Mama Llama, you came back. Little Llama, I told you so. Now it's Molly's turn to go. Okay, Mama, time to sleep. But can Molly come again next week? They had fun, didn't they? All right. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to read Elmer. Do you know what this book is about? By David McKee, it's called Elmer. Do you see anything in that picture? Do you see maybe an elephant? Look really closely. Elmer. This is one of my old favorites. You know what? This book is the same age as me. I don't know if you can see that. It was published in... 1968. This is Elmer. What an elephant, huh? There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. All were different, but all were happy, and almost all were the same color. I just froze. Oop. Did I freeze for a minute? So, let me try this page one more time in case I froze. There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young, old, tall and short, fat and thin. All were different, but all were happy, and almost all were the same color. What color are most elephants? Gray. All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color. He was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. You see all those colors? Yellow, orange, red, pink, purple, blue, green, black, and white. He looks like a big quilt. It was Elmer who kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually 
Elmer. But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush covered with elephant colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell onto the ground. Then Elmer, what did he do? He lay down and rolled over on the berries this way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with gray berry juice. When he was finished, there wasn't a sign of any yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white. Elmer looked like any other elephant. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other anim animals and they said, uh, good morning, elephant. They didn't recognize him, did they? When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants noticed him. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around, same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. <laughs> he lifted his trunk and at the top of his voice, he shouted, boo! The other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with laughter. And then the others began to laugh. <laughs> Too bad Elmer isn't here to share the fun, they said, laughing harder and harder. And then the rain clouds burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. Look at that. Oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You've played some good jokes, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? <laughs> we must celebrate this day every year, said another, the day of Elmer's best joke. All of us elephants should decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third, and Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. And each day, uh, one day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white, and they have a big parade. If you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day Parade who is ordinary elephant color, you know it must be who? Elmer. That's the end. I like that one. We should sing another song about a spider. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Okay, my last story is about two feet. Most of us have two feet. We have a right foot and a left foot. What do you think would happen if your right foot and your left foot did not like each other? This book by Rachel Vale and Matthew Cordell is called 
Righty and lefty, a tail of two feet. Can you show me, if you have two feet, which one is your left foot? Now, which one is your right foot? Very good. Righty and lefty. There they are in the bathtub. This is righty, and this is lefty. Righty and lefty don't always get along so well, but they are stuck with each other because they are two feet on one person. Righty is ready to go places. Lefty is a little cold and would like a few more minutes under the blankets. <laughs> do you ever sleep with one foot out of the blankets and one foot under the blankets? I do. Maybe that's why. Lefty's sock has a hole. Righty says, don't worry, it's a very small hole. I'm practically naked, groans Lefty. Righty likes every shoe. All of them. Lefty only likes galoshes. Galoshes? asks Righty. Galoshes. Galoshes are puddle proof, says Lefty. Good point, Righty says. If they work together, they can do tricks. This is their best trick. See the person leaning back in his chair? Until Lefty gets distracted and Righty gets clobbered. Ouch. Righty goes away and hides. Lefty is sorry for getting distracted. Lefty taps a bit, waiting, waiting. Lonely down alone on the linoleum floor. It's no fun to be Lefty without Righty. When Righty comes back down, Lefty wants to play. But Righty has fallen asleep and needs to be stomped. Outside, Righty and Lefty race. Sometimes Righty wins, sometimes Lefty wins. It is always close. If Righty wins, Lefty is a sore loser, but not for very long. Righty kicks a rock to Lefty. Lefty kicks it back. It's their favorite game. Righty loves to look at grown-up shoes. There are so many possible options. Lefty is unconvinced. I'm never wearing shoes, grumbles Lefty. When I grow up, I'm wearing galoshes every day. You only get one, says Righty. You will have to wear a galosh. <clears throat> Sometimes Righty imagines taking a beach vacation without Lefty. They help each other out of their sneakers. Ew, says Lefty. You stink. You stink, says Righty. I know, says Lefty, we are quite a pair, and they chase each other around. It's always fun until somebody gets hurt. Pow! Did you ever stub your toe? That hurts more than anything. A boo-boo bunny comes to help. It has no legs and is freezing cold. Lefty does not trust this bunny. Lefty does not like the nail clippers either or being tickled, well, maybe a little, but not so much, or the bath. Just relax and enjoy it, says Righty under the towel. Oh, moans Lefty, life is a blister. Righty doesn't want to go to bed yet. Righty thinks it's not fair that just because Lefty is tired and cranky, they should both have to go to bed. So Righty hangs down the side, swinging, now it's dark. There's nothing to do. Righty's slipper falls off. It's no fun to be righty without lefty. Righty slides under the covers. Lefty is cozy and warm. 
so Righty snuggles up beside Lefty. Good night, Lefty, says Righty. Mmm, says Lefty dreamily. Galoshes. And they dreamed about galoshes and all the other grown-up shoes together. The end. That is the end of virtual story time today. I will be back next Monday at 11 o'clock right here on Facebook Live. We will also be having our in-person story times Wednesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock for babies and toddlers, 11 o'clock for preschool and up. So hope to see you sometime, whether here, online, or at the library. Thanks, guys.